Hey guys, it's Bailey Wiki, and we are in the Regions Lab. Get ready for today. This is going to be fun. Regions, if you haven't heard, is new with Foundry V12. You're going to see a lot of cool things that I built here, things you don't recognize. You're going to see a lot of new options on Regions that you probably don't have in your interface today. And we're going to do some stuff that will blow your mind, things you didn't know Regions could actually even do. We can uh, even open them up, and I can show you there's, there's more UI options and other things that you are not familiar with, I'm going to get you familiar with those because they make regions really powerful. Just the fact that Foundry introduced the concept of regions, meaning you can draw any sort of organic sort of region in a in a scene and then have it be smart, have it trigger certain kinds of effects, is kind of step one. What module de uh, developers are doing on top of that, including myself with MassEdit, uh, we're going to show you today. So we're going to start with the basics and then we're going to jump into uh, some modules, seven specifically, that you're probably going to want to consider. One or two of them I would consider mandatory if you want to work with regions, but uh, we'll get into those here in a second. Before I start, just let me show you some of the things that we're going to create together today. We're going to talk about teleports. There's lots of ways to do teleporting within Foundry, but I can make a teleport that sends me anywhere and bumps me up or down to the right elevation. Um, we're going to talk about uh, teleports that just send you uh, anywhere else without changing elevation, right? Just how to do those kind of simple uh, basic use cases. And I'm going to show you how I made these icons and other things. Then we're going to get into terrain elevation. Uh, notice my token is jumping up in a very organic way uh, from 10 feet to 20 feet. I'm going to show you how we did that. We're going to get into creating things like difficult terrain. Notice my token's now at 15 walk speed, and they've got a little designation. Well, as soon as they leave the difficult terrain, they're back to 30 walk speed. How did I do that? I'll show you today. Vehicles. So lots of ways that I've showed you how to do vehicles. This is just one of my ship prefabs. It comes out of uh, my content here. This is just a boat. Lots of boats that we can drag onto a scene like you see here. Uh, but you notice... If I just drag a token over, nothing special happened. I didn't have to do anything. Now my token is following my boat and I can rotate it and turn it around and it works great. And then I just grab my token, drag them off, and they're no longer linked with this vehicle. So this is a new way to do vehicles. This is with mass edit. This is one that we're supporting directly. So it's the best implementation of vehicles that I've seen to date. And then we're also gonna show you how to do things like this, how to create traps and proximity effects, right? And then how you can do things like this, where your players are walking down a hallway and the torches are magically lighting as they walk by. So how do you create proximity-based things? So all of that and more we're going to talk about today. So buckle up and get ready. So really quick, if you haven't heard of the Bailey Wiki channel, we teach everyday DMs how to combine technology and art to create truly memorable experiences for their players. So we cover Foundry VTT and Dun Dungeon Drafts specifically. So if you want to hear about new and important modules or hear interviews with creators and developers or even watch live games on Foundry, we publish content like that at least weekly. We also make the most advanced maps and mapping assets for Foundry, including 2D and 3D map content, landing pages, and a lot more. You'll see those assets in most of our videos and tutorials. So if you are interested in supporting the channel and getting those awesome assets for yourself, consider joining our Patreon with a link in the description. Now, like I said, this is going to be a, uh, a dive into the basics, and then we're going to get into some more complicated things. We are on Foundry V12 build 328. If you are looking at this and Foundry has advanced beyond this, you will see changes, not only in terms of what Foundry supports with uh, regions, but also in terms of the modules and what they support and extra features and UI changes that they make. So I will link to these modules in the video description, check them out, come to my Discord or go uh, ask of the module developer questions you might have for them or leave them in the comments. Hopefully the module developer will be watching. We certainly watch these, we'll try to help. The other thing is, this is going to be a long tutorial. There's a lot to cover. Just jump around the timestamps. Just check out the basics if you want to get that done for now. If you want to go into the advanced stuff with modules, you can check those out as well. I try to just spend the time giving you as many examples and showing you how to build these things as I can. So yeah, use this as a reference. Come back to it later. And remember, there's timestamps. You can listen to things at one and a half times speed if you want to move through stuff pretty quickly. 
Now, I mentioned that there are modules that we're going to go into. Some of them are quality of life. Some of them add new functionality. Some of them are such good quality of life changes that I highly recommend using them. But we'll get into those here in just a second. OK, so to start, we're looking at the same scene, but with a bunch of those modules turned off. The only thing I have turned on is mass edit, uh, just because there's some key things that it does that I think are important. Uh, frankly, I wouldn't probably want to use regions without some of the stuff that mass edit is doing here. But uh, I wanted to show you what Vanilla Foundry generally looks like. So with Vanilla Foundry, you go to your regions tab and uh, you'll see just these options here. You can draw uh, regions. Uh, including square, circle, and polygon, and then you can create holes or modify those regions. So it's not just creating holes, it's creating other stuff, and you can also snap to grid. So let me show you what I mean. Let's draw a quick region here. Okay, so we've created this region, and we'll call this test region, just so we know what it is in our list. And some things you'll notice off the bat, you can change the color, you can set the elevation. Think of the elevation as like the three-dimensional space that that region is activatable by. So if this was a vehicle, we might make it zero to 10 feet. So anything within zero to 10 feet will interact with this region. So flying uh, players, for example, would not like automatically land on a boat, for example, if they were above 10 feet. Uh, this is gonna be important when we create plateaus, elevations, and other kinds of things uh, when we create stairs and teleports it might matter what elevation those are on so you might care that you, and you might want a teleport to be only at zero zero it's just a flat active panel sitting on a floor somewhere and it might send you to a teleporter that's at 10 10. then you can create uh, visibility so only on the region layer meaning you have to be over here and that'll show your regions uh, always for the game master you might want certain kinds of regions to be always visible to you so you know where things like traps are being triggered, for example. And then always for anyone, this is in case you want your players to know where the regions are. I don't imagine there's a lot of reason for that, but we'll, I'm sure you'll figure out something. Tagger is uh, supported here. Tagger implements this field here. Tagger is a great module. There's a bunch of other places in regions that Tagger does not yet support, which I'm hoping we see support for soon, especially when we get into things like UUIDs which I'll talk about in a second. Shapes is just uh, what shapes respond or what shapes on the scene are really kind of an inventory uh, for this particular region. And by the way, I kind of glanced over it, but the region legend automatically opens up. This also shows you what is on the scene, um, but you can also define uh, regions with this. So you have, for example, this, uh, this cool wall tool. So if we draw some walls, this, and that becomes a region. Then we can come in here and say, hey, we want to define this region um, also within these walls. So if I hold down Alt and I select all my walls, now I've got them all controlled and I press this button, it will uh, also apply this region here. And so that's another thing that's important to know about regions is that if you have a region defined, you can have multiple places on the map that all follow that exact region's configuration. So a region doesn't have to be just one spot, one contiguous spot, it can be multiple. So uh, other things to keep in mind here, if I went into like behaviors, for example, let's say I want this just to do like adjust darkness level. And I'll say, I wanna overwrite it to full darkness. I come back in here. Sometimes you'll see this will be missing information. So uh, I'm gonna talk about here in a second, how you can save your progress as you go. We'll just update this region. It closes this out and it'll save the information. That won't always be the case. You might find that you've done some work and it's um, it's erased it, and I'll show you how to fix that here in just a second. Uh, other things that we can do is we can define holes. Well, actually, look, we can just modify these regions. So if I go to circle, and if I select the region that I'm on, my test region, right? So I've got it selected, I've got my circle now, and I start drawing a circle, I can just very easily modify the region, right? I also have snap to grid on. If you turn that off, you can get pretty organic with it. So what does a hole do? Well, a hole, does the same thing it just turns it into hole mode right so i can draw a circle and i've got a hole this region will not be active for this but i can also use it just to modify my shape so i can say you know what hey i actually don't want this shape at all uh, maybe i don't even want this part of the region i just deleted it and i used the hole to do that right maybe this one i want to be more square so that's how you manipulate these after the fact now what you will notice is that you can't do some really obvious things uh I'm not even sure this exists in, in Core Foundry, but you can't move these around in Core Foundry. Once you click it, you can't like actually move it. That's one of the reasons that I recommend Mass Edit, uh, which I'll get to in a second. But Mass Edit lets you move regions around after you create them, and you can even do things like resizing the region, 
uh, using the mass edit preview functions. You can rotate it, you can do all sorts of fun stuff, okay? And then finally, you define behaviors. So behaviors are things like adjusting the darkness level, and you can toggle these behaviors on and off as you need to as the GM. Um, but maybe we want to uh, do something like, uh, some of these are with mass edits, despawn is with mass edit, display scrolling text. So when a player enters, we want to display some text. Honestly, it moves too fast, so it's not terribly helpful. Uh, maybe somebody will adjust that here uh, with a module. Execute macro and execute scripts can be super powerful. If you have macros and scripts that you know um, you uh, how to manipulate. Link token is a mass edit thing, which we'll talk about. But things like pause game, you may want to have an area of the map where if players are just freely exploring, they get to a certain area, you want to pause the game. You don't want to divulge something and you can create that kind of action. Uh, spawn preset is a... Uh, mass edit thing, which we'll talk about. Suppress weather um, and adjust darkness. You'll use those often for the interior of buildings. So I've actually used that action down here. This darkness is uh, set up to uh, override whatever the ambient light is and just set this darkness to its darkest. You will also find that brighten and darken will be good too. You may say, look, I want to always have the inside a little bit darker than the outside. So I'm going to modify it by 0.5% and I'm going to just darken whatever the outside ambient light is. I want the interior of this particular room or area to be darker than that. But I can also stack behavior. So I can say, look, I also want to suppress weather in this region, right? There's no other settings to worry about, but if I have a rain throughout my, my, map, it will not be raining within the building or the area that I've designated. It also by default can teleport tokens, uh, but there's some difficulty with that. And I'm going to show you some modules that make it easier, right? So I can say, yeah, I do want tokens to teleport, but then you've got to uh, worry about things like UUIDs. What is a UUID? Where are you going to find it? Those come from other regions or uh, in this case, yeah, other regions where I can double click into it and I've got this little button here where if I just click it, it'll copy the UUID to my clipboard and then I can paste it in here. That can be a little bit cumbersome when you're creating teleports between scenes and other things. Don't forget though, uh, and I'm gonna give you a solution here in a second, but when you enter the UUID, you have to also save it, right? So now I've got my UUID of this particular region set up. So now this region, when a token enters it, will teleport there. You can also give the token the choice whether they teleport or not. I like giving them the choice. That's down on chaos. There may be situations where you don't want to give them the choice. You can also toggle behaviors. So, you know, when a token enters or exits or does different things um, pertaining to that region, then you can turn behaviors on or off. Again, you have to worry about UADs and dragging uh, region behaviors. I, I My mileage was mixed with playing with this stuff, but you guys can see how you do. And finally, this is introduced by Monk's Active Tiles. You can actually trigger, with a region, you can trigger Monk's Active Tiles. This liberates you entirely to what you want regions to be able to automate because they can just serve as a trigger point. And then Monk's Active Tiles, with its huge library of automations, can take it from there. You just need to have a tile on the scene that's got Monk's Active Tiles on it, and you can trigger it with this. So if you create that and you say, look, uh, token... Um, even if the boundary changes of the region or uh, the token actors exits, uh, if combat starts and it's their first turn around, there's a lot of ways that you can trigger a region um, to then trigger a tile, right? And you just put the UUID of that tile in here and you're good to go. This is an example of where I want Tagger to support things. Anywhere it's asked for a UUID, it's much better for us, especially as content creators, to have a tag, something that persists, whether this intelligence goes into a compendium and comes back out again. So my quest for Tagger, and I'll send this to the Tagger developer as well, is to uh, support any of these fields that require UUIDs. So that's like the basics of what Foundry does by default. Now we're gonna talk about what happens when we start to introduce some of these new modules. Well, the first module we're going to talk about is Mass, uh, mass Edit. It's a module that I produce. Uh, Adif is the developer, but BaileyWiki is part of our kind of pantheon of modules. It's free. So everything I'm going to show you is free to do. The first thing that it does is it lets you uh, move regions around. For some reason, Foundry did not make them movable. This may change in the future, but you can do that with Mass Edit. So it's super nice. If you hit Shift D, which is a hotkey, you can do the resizing and rotating and other things um, that you might be used to with mass edit. 
if you center mouse wheel, it'll exit out of that. The second thing that MassEdit does is it introduces the link token action. So if I open up this vehicle region, I go to behaviors, I see I'm using this link token action. You get to it by creating, creating a new behavior and you'll see it here called link token. It's really simple, but super smart. Adif made this. It essentially just says, look, if a token uh, interacts with that space, and what's great about regions is it's an organic space. You don't have to use tiles, so you can really define like what is the space that you want tokens to stick to, but it'll create a uh, connection there. If I hit Shift Q, this is a new function. I'm not going to go into it today, but MassEd has a new linking function. And I can see the links on a particular map, right? So this is just like shows me all of the virtual links between entities on a map. And you'll see that I have uh, this region is a linked uh, entity and on it is linked this, this token right here. So that is a temporary link. When I pull the token away, the token is no longer linked to that drawing. Pretty cool, right? And it's really easy. You just like drag all your tokens on, doesn't really matter. And then you just move them around and they're all linked to that vehicle. You don't have to worry about anything special. Even if they're just like not on the region at all, they just aren't linked to it anymore. Super easy. And this is uh, elevation aware. So you can have like a six story galleon, a galleon like I've got and have um, vehicle functionality on all the stories of the galleon or just in a three dimensional space. It's pretty nice. The next thing it does is it allows for the creation of prefabs that include regions. Now this prefab is token attacher based, but because we have the functionality of mass edit now with shift Q, we can actually create prefabs with regions that don't involve tokens. I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to do that in a separate video, but just be aware that it does work and it, it's a way of uh, making regions reusable, right? So now I can save this boat. So this boat right here, if I go to edit, Got the token attached here. I'm going to say assign token, apply it. And now when I drag this boat out again, you see it's got the region embedded in it, right? So there's that same region for that boat. And you do need mass edit to make these prefabs because it just makes it so you can move the regions around. Otherwise, the boat would be locked in place because the region itself is locked in place. And the last thing that mass edit lets you do is create presets. So rather than prefabs, which are big like working devices or whatever with lots of entities, I want to create presets. I want to create things uh, sort of like recipes for regions that I don't have to recreate later. So everything that you're seeing on this screen, I just created a preset out of it. Uh, once I got my region the way I liked it with all the modules and other things supporting it, I just dragged it into here and I created a preset out of it, gave it a name, gave it a thumbnail image, and then you can come in here and you can say, I want to delete some fields. So these are all the settings that it'll apply uh, to other regions. And I may not want to apply those settings. I don't want to apply the shape because I may have a different shape for my region. So I'm going to delete that one. By the way, I'm going to hold down control here. I want to keep the color and elevation. I want to keep the behaviors. I like the visibility the way it is, but I'm going to delete any tag or tags. The ID is really important to delete because I don't want to apply the same ID in a bunch of scenes and a bunch of assets. And then I don't care. I don't want to necessarily apply whether it's locked or not. These may be set already by the region I set up, but this is just like the settings that I want to apply. And I say, okay, go ahead and apply those. And now I've got this new preset. So how do you use it? So uh, let's set up a new region. Call it test. And let's go ahead and draw it here. Oops. Notice I didn't have it selected. You actually have to have your region selected, then you can draw it. Oh, be careful that you're not on the select mode. You actually have to be drawing. Hey, there's a little finicky things with regions that you'll get used to. Okay, so I've got my region set, but I want to apply that preset to it. So if I go right click and I say brush. It sets up my brush as long as I don't have it in. So see if I have it in um, spawner mode, it'll it'll set that region up just in this shape. If I turn off spawner mode, it will turn to this brush and it will apply my settings. So I tap on that. Notice it gave it the same exact settings that I had assigned to it, even down to the name. It did create a separate region because it's got a separate UUID, but everything that I set up for that is already set up for me. So this is going to save you time by creating these little libraries and just storing them in mass edit.
And so I've created libraries for all these things. So anytime I need to have a terrain that's just set to 10 feet, easy. Already got it done. I just need to right click it, go to my brush, and then I can I can paint anything with that setting. Okay, so that is mass edit. That's why I recommend it. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to turn on region enchantment. So what region enchantment does is a couple of things. First of all, and by the way, this is from developer Plush Toast. It uh, color codes the region uh, title bar that you're working on. It just helps to make sure that you're visually like working on the right things. Second thing it does is it adds the save button. I mentioned before, normal Foundry region just has one button and it, 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 it basically saves and closes what you've got. But you may want to save as you go, especially if you're getting really complicated things in here. So it just gives you a save button to do that rather than closing the whole window. It also supposedly gives you drag and drop UUID functionality, but I couldn't get that working. So maybe the developer wants to know, let us know in the comments how to do that. Uh, there's also evidently a way to resize things with that module, but that also isn't documented and I couldn't figure it out either. But just for the save button and the color coding, it's pretty nice. So I'd recommend uh, considering uh, region enchantment just for those reasons. And I'm sure we'll see more from the developer as time goes on. The next one we'll turn on is Easy Regions by Farling43. Now, Easy Regions does a, a couple of things. Like it purports to make tele making teleports really easy. I couldn't really get that working, at least the way that I interpreted it from the documentation. But it does two things that, it, that I do really, really like that make it worth it for me. The first one is it, it gives you the ability to add these uh, these icons. So it's one thing to look at a region and be like, okay, like that's a region. I can tell that is what that's supposed to do. But maybe this is not necessarily clear based on the artwork underneath it. I like the idea of being able to put in artwork, right? So I know this region is a trap. And so um, you it lets you add that to the settings. And it's right under here under shapes. You can give it an image. I'm using uh, images from my um, nuts and bolts, uh, which is a free module that you can get. You can also use core foundry images under icons and SVGs. You get all of uh, foundry's core images that you can use, and then you can download your own from things like uh, gameicons.net, for example. Give them a color. I suggest a, a default size of 100 just so it's big enough. And then now it's easy to define that. And I've also put that into my presets. So all of my presets have those icons defined. So I don't have to go back and look for those when I just want to create a teleport with the downstairs arrow, it'll automatically create that for me. It'll save it in my mass edit presets. The other thing that it does is it makes it easy to look up UUIDs. UUIDs, by the way, are not the greatest, especially for content creators, because if you export them to Compendium back in again, you may break, there's a lot of ways to break those links if you guys have watched our tutorials. It's much better to use tagger tags, for example. But if you're just building this for your own world, UUIDs are probably fine. But finding the UUID and coming up here and like copying it, that could be kind of a pain. So uh, when you're working with easy regions, you can come in here and it introduces this little drop down. And what it's doing is it's looking for all of the other teleport regions, um, uh, other regions that you may want to connect with. And it's really smart about it. And there's some settings that you have to do to, to, to make this happen. But what this is doing is it's just looking through the scenes that are in my navigation up above. It's filtering down to those first, and then it's telling me the regions by name, not by UU, UUID that I want to connect to. And then when you pick, finally pick that region and you save it, it'll add it up here. So that's like super great when you're building teleports to have it automatically filtered down for you. It even tells you the name of the scene that it's in and then the name of the region that you're trying to pick. So just to show you those global settings, we're in easy regions now. You can see there's a lot that you can turn on and off. I'll let you read through these. It's it's very self-explanatory, but you will, ch by default, this is off. I checked it on for only navigatable scenes. Will it give me some of those options? So you can check through the rest of these if you want to keep these on or off. Um, when it talks about making, uh, creating teleports easy, it uses this nomenclature of like S1 up to S2. If you write something, I'm oh, sorry, that's not S, that's a dollar sign. If you write something that fits this nomenclature, it will automatically pick that up and supposedly add the actions for you, the behaviors for you. I tested it and didn't get it working, but it might've just been user error. So that's easy regions. I consider that one of my defaults. Like I wouldn't want to use uh, regions without easy regions. 
Next one we're going to turn on is Region Active Effects by uh, KLAD02. Okay, so what Region Active Effects does is, is it adds status effects and active effects to tokens as they enter or exit regions or do other things. So if you don't know what a status effect is, it's when you right click your token and you have all these effects that in your HUD, those are status effects. And those are usually system defined and we'll pick up on those and apply those different statuses. Uh, an active effect is where you open up your token. This is not for PF2E people. Their active effects are handled by items. But for everyone else, most of everyone else, in your effects tab, you have other active effects that you can uh, create and assign, right? So I have this active effect of being super strong that I can then, if I go into editing this effect, I have a UUID and I can uh, apply this effect to tokens that walk into a particular region. What I like about region active effects is it's got kind of a simple mode and then a harder mode. So, or like a more advanced mode. So we'll create a new region and uh, we'll have it be a uh, these settings uh, and then the behaviors we're going to add uh, so what it introduces is status effect and then active effect uh, the active effect and the active effect event so let's go to status effect so uh, when players enter it's super simple they're just going to get the bleeding effect right uh, and then when they leave that effect will uh, will go away. If I set it as an overlay, the effect will take up the entire uh, dimensions of the, the token. If you turn that off, it'll just show up in the top corner of the token. So if I turn that on, users walk into it, they'll get the bleeding effect. And you basically get, depending on what your system is, whatever your uh, system defined statuses are. It's super easy, super simple, and that's why I like this module. But you can also define events, so you can get a little bit more complicated with it, right? So now it's, look, when a token enters, I want them to get this, but I want them, maybe, maybe I want them to keep that status effect. So even if they exit the area, they're going to keep it. That could be super nice. There's a ton of uses for that. Or if they finally exit an area, I want to cleanse them of that effect uh, because now they're, you know, now they're no longer in like a cursed zone kind of thing. But you can also do it around when the tokens start their turns and end their turns and when the round ends and stuff like that. So it also applies to combat. Um, and you can either add the effect, you can reset the duration of it, you can just enable or disable, or you can delete the effect entirely. And then, of course, you can pick your effect by UUID here. All right, the next one I'll show you is terrain mapper by kwalk if you remember kwalk kwalk made elevated vision which was a really cool innovative module that uh it manipulated vision settings in order to create like terrains within scenes now what was great about elevated vision or what was difficult about elevated vision is like with levels and others before foundry really supported true elevation we had to do all of these um, backflips to uh, manipulate token vision in order to make multi-level maps work. Well, now that, that Foundry has so much support of these different levels, Kwok was able to build Terrain Mapper to take advantage of that um, and to take advantage of the native stuff. So it works really, really well. And it does kind of two major things. Actually, does it does a lot of stuff, but I guess we'll say two major things. Uh, the first thing is... It gives you these new fill abilities and it gives you this uh, this terrain library. Supposedly, there's supposed to be some trains already built into this. They weren't built into my version. Um, not sure what I might be doing wrong, but I built a train anyway. And you can keep your trains in these libraries and they're super interesting, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, but it, it basically lets you create elevation changes. So you see I've got two terrains here uh, making elevation changes. And then it lets you also uh, create status effects and other things within a particular terrain. So you can create like difficult terrain. So yeah, you could probably do this also with region active effects. Uh, this is maybe just a different way to do it. So let me walk you through the terrain side of things first. So if I open this up, I've got a region like you normally see. You'll notice my elevation though. It's negative infinity and 10 at the top. That defines the space that this uh, this region is in. And you'll also notice they're, they're stacked. So this whole region, you'd have to draw it this way, but you can stack regions at different elevations and it works really well. Uh, the 
shape I didn't give any special image to, I might add an image for like 10, just so I can see at a glance, this is 10 feet whenever I drop it in somewhere, but haven't decided to do that yet. Maybe the module developer can do something where I can sort of quickly see that this is 10 feet at this region. That'd be kind of helpful. Now, if I go to behaviors, um, you can see that, whoops, I've got a trigger tile behavior that I don't want. So I've got a set elevation. That's one of the behaviors that you can set up. We'll just set up a new one here. So set elevation is introduced by this module. You set your elevation to whatever the top of that region is. So in this case, it's going to be 10. And then you can toggle on reset on exit. If you don't toggle this off, then players will stay at that elevation when they walk off. So you'll probably generally always keep it on. I don't know. It's probably use case not to, but that's essentially uh, what we've done here. And that's as simple as it is. And what it does then is it just makes it really easy for a token to walk into that space and all of a sudden their elevation is 10. They can walk around and they can walk off the space and their elevation resets. But if they walk up to this other space, it goes to 20, right? So you can, you can have all sorts of cool creative stuff with elevations. I'll show you here some examples of what I made here in a bit. Another thing you might want to consider is you might want to put walls in between these two. So I just drew this wall. The wall is set to not restrict movement because I want players to be able to go up in elevation, but everything else is set to normal. And that just makes it so that, you know, your users can't see over this ledge. Now, maybe you want them to and you want to not restrict vision, that sort of thing. But just consider that if you're making maps, you may end up using walls to sort of separate these regions as well. By the way, I, I didn't mention some of these fill options. So, you know, once I have a terrain set, like this 10 foot terrain, I can also fill an area enclosed by walls. So if I have a room, for example, like this room I built before, and I want to fill that area full of walls. So I grab my 10 feet. I go to the fill. It will automatically show me the walls for convenience on my level. And if I click that, as long as these walls are totally closed, it will fill that with the 10 foot region. It will not work uh, if these walls are open or it'll bleed out and it'll fill the entire scene. So you do have to make sure that your scene is enclosed with walls. Okay, so now let's go to this terrain library. So I just went to create a terrain and you get a very familiar uh, window. This is this the active, um, effects window that we're used to using in Foundry that's super smart, lets you make active effects, uh, but it's got a couple of extra things here, right? So do I want the train um, to be duplicatable, right? So maybe I want double um, difficult terrain. Well, if I did that, I could select this and I could I could have two, two trains overlap each other. Um, do I want to give a status icon? You know, you don't have to display a status. I would generally want to do that. So I'd want to know if there was something affecting my player. But then you can set durations and all the other stuff that you can select with active effects. Uh, and then what you do is you come into changes, like what do you actually want it to do? And you're going to want to figure out its attribute key. I don't know if this was introduced by a module I have, but I have this really handy drop down here. But in the D&D system, I can come down here to system attributes and movement. And I have all my movement speeds. And so I might pick my walk speed. I, in this case, I want it to be half, so I'll multiply times 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then that is going to uh, make it so that this is difficult terrain. So then the ways that you do it is once you build your, you know, once you just like draw your, your region, you can see I've got difficult terrain region. You can go in, I called it difficult terrain. I said I always want to see it when I'm the game master. I assign the little mountain icon from just from the standard uh, foundry icons just so i kind of always know what that is and then i did a set terrain behavior in this case i define the terrain so once you have them in your library they'll show up in this list right so i have difficult terrain set and then i have it secret so players can't just see it otherwise if you don't have the set when they drag their tokens around they can kind of see that region i didn't want them to see that the nice thing about region active effects by klad is it sort of has all that stuff out of the box it's easy to use so you may end up using both like i plan on doing now even though i built this train within this uh, default preset i did want all of my stuff ultimately living in my own mass edit library so i have my difficult terrain defined here as well. This just lets me have more control over it and it lets me kind of have all of my stuff 
in one place. So I can just, you know, really easily just create a brush out of that, make sure it's not in spawning mode, and I can make anything, any region I've drawn difficult terrain region. Now, a couple of things to mention. Um, uh, terrain Mapper does support PF2E, but PF2E handles status effects differently. It uses them as items than as um, active effects like Foundry defines. So if you're using PF2E, it still supports that. It'll just look a little bit different in your interface. Uh, you can also evidently add a status effect. If we drag it to our players, you notice if we drag it to their uh, character sheet, we can apply the status to them just by doing that. And we can toggle it on and off or delete it from here. Okay, so th uh, three final modules to mention. Just be aware that Levels also supports uh, regions. It does it um, by virtue of, it, it can be an alternative way of making stairs. You may still want to use drawings. It supports that. Um, but, and as long as we have our levels UI open, if we go to create a region, notice it created a region called levels stair, and we just draw that. If we go in and examine this, You'll see it said level stair from zero to nine because that's the definition of the level I've defined here. And it creates this automatic behavior, which is a script. And the script basically says, this is how I want you to, this is what I want you to do as far as the stair goes. You can actually modify this script and make it things like a elevator or a one-way stair. If you have questions about that, just go to Ripper's Wiki, which is linked here, and it shows you how to make those modifications if you want kind of special stairs. Second thing is, of course, uh, Token Attacher, as you saw here, you can make prefabs and you can add regions to them and it will support regions within the prefab. And the last one is Monk's Active Tiles. That's where you get to create things like traps and proximity effects. So if you look here, First of all, I've got darkness to find here because I wanted these torches and stuff to be darker than the, the uh, full lit screen around me. And then I've got uh, different things like here's a trap, right? So if I go into trap, I can see, uh, you know, it's got all the things that I want. I assigned an icon to it. And then the trigger tile behavior, if you open it up, you can say, all right, so when a token enters, so you have all of the different events, you can have multiple of, of it different events. When a token enters, I want to trigger a tile and you trigger it by the UUID. In this case, I have a, an animated tile. You can't see it here, but I grab this UUID and I put it in here and it will now just trigger that tile. So all of the automation is really in the tile. If I open this tile up, I can see under triggers that uh, it's manually activated. So there's no other way to activate it, but through the region, right? So that way I don't accidentally trigger it. Players don't trigger it another way. Um, and then my actions are I'm going to show this particular tile. Otherwise, it's hidden by default. It's going to hurt anyone within the, the range of the tile um, by 3D6. It's going to start animation, play a sound. It's going to wait, and then it's going to reverse everything, hide the tile, stop the animation, and deactivate. Okay? So now if I want to test it out, It's got things like a light that came on, it's got a sound that fires, and it hurt my player, right? So my player was at like 86 hit points, now they're at 62, right? So that's how you can set up that kind of trap. And then we also have just the ability to do things like proximity uh, things. So if I look here, I've got some proximity um, lights where if I click it open, its behavior is to uh, trigger you know, once they enter, it triggers this particular tile. This tile is really simply, or let's get my lights on here. This right here is just a torch tile. Let's see it, I, I can kind of move around. And if you click it open, that's the thing that's got, like if you click it, it will, uh, it'll play this torch sound. It'll toggle the torch on and off. So players can set them up just by walking down the hallway, which I think is a cool effect. If they wanted to, though, they could just click that torch and turn it off there as well. But two really simple examples of Monk's Active Tiles. Okay, so that's it. That's about seven modules that you're going to want to probably be thinking about or knowing how they interact with regions. Tons of stuff that you can build with regions. 
I'm going to be building more content. Like I'm going to have all of my vehicles kind of retrofitted with regions here and probably the next release. Um, you can come in and pick up my vehicles now and just draw a region and connect it super easy. Um, okay, where do we go from here? So I think we're going to see a lot of changes from Foundry because there's still some rough edges, as you saw as we were interacting with it, I think that need to be smoothed out. And I think you're going to see a ton of stuff from the module developers, not just the ones that I highlighted, but probably others. Two requests that I have, though, of module developers. You guys let me know what you think, but the power of regions is really, really significant. And it's significant because you can draw spaces, areas, not have to be confined by the shape of a tile or anything else in order to make stuff happen. So two things that I think would be great. First one is sounds. I love the idea of being able to uh, draw a region through like a babbling brook. And when my players walk through it, they hear sloshing sounds. I want to be able to fire off random sounds. Like I have a collection of sloshing sounds in my, in my town's library that uh, if I can randomly fire those as users are walking through it, it makes this really cool effect. I can have rustling leaves. I can have uh, footsteps on a wooden dock. I mean, all sorts of things that make that map feel like um, really interesting, right? The next one is, and I don't even know if this is possible, but a visual effects region. So, uh, adding like animated effects to like a river can i make a river look like it's running by adding an effect that runs regions might let me change the direction of that flow and make it look like i've got a bit of animation on a map that wasn't built for animation right uh, bubbling effects in a bog um you know you can do this with foundry walls and lighting and things like that maybe we just need more foundry lighting options to do this but i feel like creating visual effects within a region would be super awesome maybe it's using token magic effects maybe it's using animated assets from like jba or jb2a or jinker or others um including weather effects maybe the reverse of excluding kind of thing would be would be interesting um, but just like how do you create more visual effects within a region, I think could be cool. So that's it. That's my two requests from module developers. But I love where regions is at. I love where it's heading. And I love what it's opened up for all of us. So just to show you some of the stuff in action, this is from the release that just came out today. And, you know, my players have fought their way through this necroman necromancer's dungeon. They open the door, light shines through. They walk into a teleport, and here they are in like the boss fight, right? So now they then they make their way into this uh, sort of dark necromatic chamber. Here we've got this throne room, very Game of Thrones inspired throne room. It's in the daytime, and if I want to have a battle here, here in this room I've set something up that's kind of special. Let's say that I want to. So I want to draw a region here, and I want to have another one here, Whoops. and then I want to draw another region right here, okay, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to open up my mass edit, and I'm going to come here to my stairs level one to level two, and I'm going to brush that on there. And then close my brush, open a new one, brush that on here. Okay, then I just need to come in here and assign their destinations. So I'm in the throne room, and I want to go from B2 down to A1. That's where I want this one to go. I save it. And this one, I want to go in the reverse. Get rid of that just to make sure I don't have the wrong one. So throne room, A1 to B2, save it, update that. And let's test it out. Great. Now I can run around up here because this is on a different level. It doesn't activate when I want run over it, but I can now shoot enemies from up top and I can go back here. Maybe I don't care about asking for permission just because it's in the same scene, it's not that chaotic. So I could come in here and turn these off. And I've got a really fluid motion. So I jump up 10 feet, I'm now shooting from up top, come back in, 
works great. You can add the same thing to the other side. And I've got a great, I've got a great scene to work on. By the way, this is the sun. You can move it around and the sun actually floods the throne room from different angles. And then I can turn this off or I can turn it down to night mode. And the sun shuts off, the torches are now visible, I can hear crickets chirping, that kind of thing. So I love Foundry, I love what you can do with, with this tool. And the last thing is this uh, bone altar, this is sort of a boss room, it's kind of how I'd set it up. And let's say that I want these brazers to uh, pop a user up by a few feet. So I've already set up these terrain walls that have a 20 foot top and infinite bottom. And if I come in here and I just draw some squares, we'll get rid of, we won't snap to grid here because these might need to be in a different shape. Uh, okay, we'll just leave that the way it is. Draw this one here. Okay, so that's the same region essentially, just two parts of it. Then I'm gonna come in here, uh, open up my mass edit, and I want these to be 20 feet, so I'm gonna add this to my brush. Looks good. Paint it on. You see it painted both regions. Now let's just double check that region. All right, so it's 20 foot top, just like I like. It has 20 foot is the name of it. It's got uh, no token assigned to it, and it sets my elevation to 20. It's exactly what I wanted, okay? Uh, I will point out that there is no movement restriction with these walls. So now if my player steps onto it, they're now 20 feet up. And they step off, right? You see it, it blocks line of sight when they're not on it. And they can get a better view of the uh, battle when they're up, up top. Cool, right? But anyway, I hope you guys like it. Uh, definitely come check us out if you want to get any of the assets that you saw in this tutorial. And other than that, let me know in the comments uh, what else you'd like about regions. And in the meantime, have fun making your maps.